Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Bite Size Talk. I'm very happy to have here today Judith from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. And she is going to talk about how to use NFCore configs in custom pipelines. Off to you. Thank you. Well, again, hi, everybody. My name uh, is Judith Ballesteros. I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology here in Leipzig, Germany. And I would like to thank uh, the space um, I will presenting. I will be presenting today how to use this NF core configs in your own non-NF pipeline. And I have this necessity of running previous pipelines that I have already uh, or to automatize little task in the cluster that I currently uh, am working. So what I'm about to present is what it worked at the end and I hope it can be as useful as it has been for me. So over the next few minutes, I will guide you through this topic with the following agenda. First, what are the NF4 configs, why to use them, and a step-by-step -step example in a non-NF core pipeline. Finally, a uh, recap from all. So let's start. Uh, what are the NF core configs? Well, uh, there are simple text files that describes the properties of your computational environment, uh, which is basically resource allocation or managing hardware and software resources to run processes in a computing environment. And by hardware resources, I mean CPUs, memory, and disk storage. And with software resources, uh, the library that models or pipelines need to access. And additionally, these configs include a scheduler configura configurations, uh, which dictate the order in which tasks are executed and how resources are assigned. Uh, they can also limit the resources that a user consumes to prevent a resource monopolization. So uh, these files might appear basic, but you can see here, they are quite powerful for the pipeline to work. And um, here in this slide, uh, these are all the documented profiles or institutional configs. So if you are lucky enough, uh, there is one already for the institute in which you are working. In my case, for example, uh, Eva is the one that belongs to the Max Bank. And uh, you can access the link here to have an updated overview of them. But don't worry if you don't have or you didn't see your institution in the last slide, you can also make yours and contribute to the NFCore community by simply following this tutorial in written version, following this QR code or in beta version. And why to use this NFCore configs or what are the benefits of using them? Uh, well, there are several reasons of in considering integrating this. First, um, they save time because they are there already with their resources and settings predefined, saving you uh, manually specifying job parameters or consulting notes on how to submit jobs to the cluster, but still you can customize your parameters to align with your specific uh, needs. You can automate, automate repetitive task by creating mini pipelines for a specific task or steps, saving valuable time. And also with these configs, uh, you can adapt your workflows and scale them as needed. Whether you're working with small data sets for testing or large analysis, uh, they, will be, they are flexible to allocate uh, resource efficiently. And how does this work? Well, to include them, we need at least three steps. The first is to set the basic resources and you can set them uh, either for the entire pipeline or uh, for an individual process. Then um, load the institutional profile repository 
and check the and add a check max function to ensure that you are that your task resource request um adhere to the maximum limits defined in the institutional profile and finally run it so let's walk through an example to make this clear and um for illustrate this i took the first uh, script example from the next flow documentation to show that this doesn't need to start from a complex pipeline to work with. And in this example, I've organized the script into modular directories for each process with a main and if um, a file containing the workflow, which is something that I would make in reality. And we would run it with additional parameters on our own computer with its extraction. Next, we'll run main and if and the parameter for this example, which is a string. And upon execution, you'll see that uh, it indicates that it is running locally. So now let's apply these three steps to integrate the NF core configs. And first, we may have already assigned basic resources for all the processes of our pipeline. And if you not have them assigned yet, this is um, the time. You can set them for all the pipeline or for each process. And here, for example, I assign CPUs, and memory, and time in a configuration file that I named base.config within a com directory. And then um, we need to incorporate that config file in the general nextflow.config. But um, the real magic happens when we load the institutional profile repository with these five lines of code. And with them, we're basically adding all the existing instructions to work properly in each of uh, the environments or cluster institutions. And also um, specify adding custom parameters from the profile. And you can see here uh, what a chunk of the file looks like. So this link loads all the profile and each profile loads each config. And um, even better, if your institutional profile is not there or maybe you misspell it, you will have an informative error that it is not there. And um, finally, you need to add a check max function to the next load config and all these lines of code that you're seeing or indeed other resources that we asked for our task do not exceed the maximum limits that are defined in the institutional profile. And I think that this is good for new people because we maybe do not remember which are those limits or, and this can prevent that it crashes. And if you exceed these limits, um, you will again get an informative message about which type of resource you're exceeding. Uh, it can be memory, CPUs, or time, and it will still run by using the default values. And now our structure will be slightly different for this example. We optionally added the base.config and the profiles in the next in the next low config. And um, when we run the pipeline you need to choose the corresponding institution. And as a result, uh, now the executor uh, switch from local to your cluster environment. In my case, for example, um, I'm using the EVA cluster, oh, which uh, uses SGE to send the jobs. So um, in summary, you can use institutional profiles from NF core with a non NF core pipeline by defining the basic resources, load the resources to the next log config, and load the NF core institutional profile repository config with custom parameters, and um, adding this check max function. And remember that if your institution is enlisted among the existing profiles, you can consider creating one and contributing to the NF core community. So this effort um, not only benefits you, and but also your colleagues. So, thanks you.
thank you for the space to present this brief topic here. Uh, a special thanks to James for helping me to grow this tutorial and apply it to my own work. And you can find the Korean steps in the link of this QR code and the real example image. Now I'm happy to answer any question you may have. Thank you very much, Judith. So uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Um, there seems to be no questions. Uh, I was wondering how long did you need in order to get your way around all these config files for NextFlow? Was it a problem or was it very straightforward and clear? Um, it was not um, that clear. That's why uh, we we make some tries and at the end we say, okay, maybe this is useful not only for me, but for other people. Hmm. And uh, do you think there is something that we could improve in terms of documentation for those config files? Or um, is it more that it's just very complicated in itself? Um, I think I think you are doing great in documentation and also with these tutorials and mini talks. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any more questions? If not, then uh, I would like to thank you very much. And um, it was a good talk, very good talk. It will help a lot of people, I'm sure. And I, of course, also thank the audience for listening in and um, the John Zuckerberg for funding these bite-sized talks. Thank you all very much. Thank you.